there a rock over there? I need one to hold down the tablecloth. Mommy! Yes? Oh, thank you, buddy. <coughs> Wet rock, right? Right from the tree. That's okay. Tree. Thank you. Tree. Can you find one more? There's a big ah, fear okay. in our society of allowing kids to take perceived risk. And I understand where it comes from. I, I read a quote one time that said, having a child is like having your heart walking around. So it's really powerful and it's this connection that I've never had before. So I get that fear, you're terrified of something happening to your child. You know, there are some times when Aiden gets out of my sight when we're out and I get a little panicky. I've had to allow him to take some risk and be able to climb rocks and trees and uh, be out of my sight a little. And the benefits far outweigh the negative things that can happen. I don't happen. like playing this game anymore. Okay. Well, what, are, um, what does Megan have? What do I have? Amy Dibs! Yeah. Awesome! Uh, the first science experiment. Uh, I eat it. Did you hear anything, Miss Megan? I don't know. <laughs> Yay! 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 Did you sneak some, Aiden? <laughs> I really did, Mom. You did. All right, I think Bryson wanted to go across the stream to look for bugs. Do you want to come, Sienna? Can I help you across? Here, I can um, go up. Uh, uh, we can move that. Do you want to move one of those logs? Yeah. Okay. That's really heavy. All right, Sienna. Let's see. Will this work? I can No. No. We can okay. add together a tiny log to it. Okay, that's a great idea. How's that? Okay. There we go. Yeah, I'm oh, moving a little. That's a good strategy. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. What is our weather today? It's cool and clearish, but except not overnight. Oh yeah. What do we What do we see over here? It is warm. All right. And uh, can everybody point to a cloud? Everybody find a cloud. Ooh, a sprinkler cloud. The water droplets, okay, they form the cloud, and then when they get heavy enough, what happens? They drip. Ooh, they drip. They rain. They, they all look slow. Do you guys want this one? Yes, okay. Island, do you want it? There's more room. Island, Ben, do you guys want to come over here? There's more room. Okay, can you guys only have one water so that we can give the other one to somebody else? All right, Ben and Isla, there's some water for you guys. Now you can use it to paint. Oh, there's some water coming your way, Wendy. Oh, go back. Where is it going? I've always wanted to be a teacher uh, ever since I was little. I, when I would do imaginative play, I would always pretend to be a teacher. Um, it's a true passion of mine. I uh, have taught in a variety of different areas and cultures. I taught in the country of Jordan. I taught English to first through fourth graders. I really like working with the primary grades and just their enthusiasm uh, for learning and for life. Um, when they understand a concept and just how excited they get um, is a really amazing thing as a teacher to see. And it, um, when Fred does all new, it, um, he does Oh, oh yeah. What about liney and ladybug? Ooh, liney, liney ladybug? What do you think? And what do you notice? Does it have legs or no legs? Yes. Look, does it have a lot of legs or just a few legs? A lot. It does. Hundreds. I can't even count them. I really love just being out and giving kids materials or using the natural materials that are out there to just come up with new ways of doing things. So just bringing a rope this week 
and all the different ways it was used. It was used to make shelters, it was used for tug of war, it was used to wrap people up as presents. I can't even think of all the ways that this one rope was used. And even though I had an idea of what I was gonna do with the kids, they came up with so many more. Okay. Ready, but I'm bringing it to the room, okay? Oh, Aiden, that makes me really nervous, especially when you have socks on. Make sure you hold on with both hands, okay? Okay. okay. Can you come back through, please? Daddy. Thank you. Daddy. And if I put this right here, look what will happen. Okay. Put that one there. So, then put that one right there. Okay. Then I put this one right here. All right. Perfect. You want to push it down all the way? Okay. Doesn't go all the way. It doesn't go all the way. Okay. Great. Do you like it like that? Mm-hmm. Do you want a jacket? Um, thank you. Are you sure? What no. about gloves? No. No gloves? No. Okay, I'm gonna bring some gloves. decided to start the fourth school, I didn't know what would happen with it. I just knew that it was something I wanted for my son, but it has been really hard, especially being a single working mom. It's been an uphill battle from the beginning, just trying to help people understand the value of it and helping the state and other people to understand that um, can sometimes be challenging, but I feel like it's important and I want to help this movement grow. Two birds, day breaks words. <laughs> Do you see the two birds? I see a bird. <gasps> oh. I see and two. Yeah, we had two birds in our book. We also have a bird that Natalia found right up there in the tree. How many birds are in the tree, Natalia? Two. two? There's two up there, too? I see one right <gasps> Oh, you're one right. There's one right behind it, too. I like mountains. Mountains. I like, I like mountains and, and trees. I, I don't know. It's a toss-up for me. I like both. I like both too. I like both too. I like both three. <laughs> All learning is done outside. So 75 to 100% of the time is spent outside. There's forced kindergartens, there's walled kindergartens, and then there's forced schools. So it, it's about a group of kids, um, multiple ages, being outside and interacting with each other, with themselves, with each other, and with the environment around them. And all of those pieces are important in the forest school model. So they're able to take risks and do things like climb and play in the water and things that we've become afraid of in society. Um, but they're done with parameters in order to keep the kids safe, but still allowing them to, to be on their own and to be independent. Also to just interact with bugs. We had one little girl who uh, was terrified of bugs when she started. And then a few months into the program, she brought us a bug from her house and somebody accidentally let it go. Uh, and she was really upset about it, but then she ended up finding a daddy long leg. Um, and so she was really happy. And she goes, wait, I have more. And we asked her where, and she's like, in my lunchbox. <laughs> and she had been collecting them. Um, so, you know, just her self-confidence in interacting with the bugs and creatures when we're out um, grew so much just within a few months. 
of climbing. Uh, the other piece is the interactions with each other. By allowing that free play, and especially outdoors, they have more space, they have more room to really dive into those um, imaginative play scenarios. But with that comes conflict. So we bring them together and have them talk about their feelings and work out solutions together. Make that nice, and uh, what I, I said to put um, Rowan said to put the egg there. That that's why. Hey Jeffrey, can can you not mess anything up? Okay. Connor, Connor, turn around, please. Look, like you got Cooper awesome. in the face. I think this stick is too long. No. Yeah. No. Bud, come here. You can't seem to watch both ends of it at the same time, and you scratched Cooper across the face right here, mm -hmm. okay? So I think you need to pick a smaller stick that you can see where both ends are, okay? So where is this big one? Um, it can just be anywhere. Okay, so let's put this one down, and you can keep going with the one that where you can you can see it. Maybe. Okay. Yep, you can keep this one. Do you want to maybe check on Cooper and see if he's okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good job. Let's go. This is the blade. No. This is the cutting oh. edge. Okay. When I hold my sheath knife, I hold it like this. When I walk with my sheath knife, I walk like this. When I'm not using my sheath knife, I sit it at my side like this. Uh, when I'm using my, two, uh, my sheath knife, I am... I'm going to be two arms length and a tool away. Two arms length and then a tool away. Okay. When I finish with my sheath knife, I put it back in the case and I put it in the designated tool area, which is where? Over there. Over there. Okay. What do you see, Emery? Yeah. I see a mouse. Ooh, a mouse. Oh. I see a mouse with no back leg. Oh, and Xander sees a whale. When I had my son, I decided to come back to Colorado. Um, so I was pregnant with him, I decided to go back to school and get my master's in ecological teaching and learning. Um, and through that, I was able to combine my passion for the outdoors with my passion for teaching. Um, and I found a model of education that for the first time I believe wholeheartedly in. I really wanted to go back to work, um, but when I went into a daycare and uh, preschool facilities, everything was inside and he thrived so much outside. But no legs, I'm too busy working up on this. I'm, I'm working on it so Rowan, Rowan would be really, really psyched about this. So I'll have to do this. <laughs> Can't decide if I want this to be another can up there. Our another solar panel to reflect sun or a window. Can aside. And guess what? Um, even when I was like a little a little baby, I get to still open um things that that my mom closed all the way. I get to still open. No matter what, I can still open them. Can I show them? Um, can I show them up the the deer? The elk. Yeah. yeah. The elk. Come on. So the elk was right here, and we go to the elk place since they had an elk here. In doing my research, um, I learned about all of the social emotional benefits and cognitive benefits, the increase in self-esteem and self-confidence, a greater ability to concentrate on tasks for extended periods of time, better insight into self and others, and then a greater connection uh, with the natural environment. I knew that this is what I wanted for my own child and to teach and to spread, but then after starting it, and seeing all of those benefits within a month of being in our program has been truly well, I feel amazing. Like somebody should be spotting me, Viviana. 
I said, I feel like somebody should be spotting me. <laughs> oh, good. Maybe because you're a bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Got it? Okay. I can't climb up the tree, Diego? Why not? Because I'm a teacher. <laughs> Teachers can't climb trees? The feeling that I get when I am on top of a mountain is like no other feeling that I've ever had or can describe. I feel so connected with myself and with the world around me, the natural world and the spiritual world. And I can just be there and be up there for hours. But part of that is also the process of getting there. So a lot of times it's really hard and it's never the same. They're all different. The process of getting there is different and when you're sitting on top, it's different. And the feeling that you have Okay, you can go all by yourself this time, okay? Okay. You do one big push. Okay. If you need another one, I'll give you another one, okay? What do you yeah. do if you're coming to a tree? Feel. Okay. I'll try to stop with your feet. Okay, ready? Yeah. Set, go. With all of the regions and cultures that I have lived and worked in, I have learned so much from the land and the people in those areas. And I, I want that for him. Eventually to be able to go out and to see other cultures and learn about other people. But I think that starts with the ecosystem and how everything outside is different and connecting with that. Mm -hmm.